No, we can't fly to the moon, but other people can. We can't sail to the moon either. It is beautiful though, thank you. I wanted you to see that too. Isn't it beautiful? Night shift is one of those times where you get to be alone, alone with your thoughts, alone with the world, alone with the stars. You just get time. It's cool. It's beautiful temperature in the tropics out here a lot of the time. And it's peaceful. It's super peaceful. Um, and it's when you think about how crazy it is what we've actually done out here. I mean, how far we've come, how many oceans we've crossed, how many miles we've done on this little boat, how far from land we've been, how small the world actually is. Like, holy smokes, the world is not a big place. It's kind of surprising. It's wonderful out here. It's alone. It's peaceful. The stars are bright. The moon is bright. Sometimes birds come for a visit. I think there's a bird back there now. Sometimes dolphins come in the night and you can see their luminescence trails. Sometimes there's amazing bioluminescence off the back of the boat. Um, yeah, it's, it's just, it really is incredible out here at night. And now I'm gonna sit here and drink some tea and stare at the stars before I think I lose them in the cloud coming right up here. Hopefully there's no rain. And we will, we'll talk to you in a little bit. Into. I haven't looked in the last. Yeah, we're really. It's tight. I'm gonna have. We're gonna have to turn. <laughs> it's always such a bummer when you get up on shift and you have to actually do something. So um, I'll let Ben tell you what he does on shift. It'll be fun for me to see. Um, but yeah, other than that, I'm basically off now. So I'm gonna go to bed so I can get some sleep before I have to get up in the morning. Basically, there's class A and class B type of ships out here, and we're class B. Tankers are class A. And the class A ships, they don't give a shit about class B ships, so <laughs> they just like barrel you down. So it's up to us to change course. Uh, you can hear the class A ships call up other class A ships, like tanker to tanker, say, what are you doing? You know, who's changing course? But you never hear a class A ship call up like, a little boat like us saying, what are you doing? They're just like, <laughs> The only time we've had a ship turn that was a tanker was off the coast of Madagascar. And it's because I think there's sometimes piracy in the area, right? Because there's like piracy watch further north. Yeah. And that was the only time we've actually had a tanker change course. We didn't have AIS, so they were picking us up on radar. We had our AIS turned off. Um, at some point, I think. Or did we have it on? I can't remember. Anyway, yeah, they turned there. And I think they must have some policies uh, in certain parts of the world um, to avoid certain ships when you're in pirate waters. Not a bad idea. Is it weird that I check that they're breathing still? <laughs> With Bodhi, I usually just check that he's breathing. It's already been an hour, and uh, the freighter is now right beside us, so I've decided to bear off, actually jibe and uh, parallel his course. So so now we're not going to intersect at all, um, and we're going to cross with 2 miles, 2.2 miles between us. So 
That's a good one. Also downloading footage, so we have a lot of cameras. We got a camcorder to zoom in on stuff. We got another camcorder for slow motion. This is um, a cam, a Canon camcorder. We have an Insta360, the GoPro, iPhone, and then obviously the camera that I'm filming with right now. And they all get put onto two hard drives and also the cloud. So uh, a cloud storage location as well. So yeah, three spots. Good morning guys. As the sun comes up beside me, I've just finished my workout for the day and it's going to start heating up and you'll see it's a very simple life out here. We catch fish, we eat them, we make the most of the food we have left in our fridges and then of course it's a very busy life as well because we have to make our own water, we have to look at weather routing, we have to take care of our kids and do some preventative maintenance every single day. So you're the master of your own world when it comes to sailing around the world and you have to deal with everything from immigration, uh, customs, to piracy and safety at sea, uh, to seamanship and adapting to the ocean's conditions. So our day starts off with our batteries and we're always looking at our charged state of our batteries. We have lithium batteries so right now they are at 44% which is pretty low but it's it's lithium so it's okay and you can see that the photovoltaic charger the solar panels are starting to put in some juice the sun's still pretty low on the horizon so uh, they're not putting in a lot of juice but this should be fully charged by about early afternoon good morning Swivel, okay? You see how it turns? Hey, dude, pay attention. You put it on like this. Oh, see? Okay, ready? Yes. Ready. Okay. You wanna throw it? Ready? Can you say fish on? Say fish on. Oh. Oh. High five.
That one. Okay. Ow. Which one did you choose, Bodhisattva Mama? This one. That's the one I would have chose. Too bad. Good choice. He's like the best fishing buddy you could ever imagine. You can't like really get a better fishing buddy than a toddler like this. We're still picking up the pieces from our 24 hour nightmare. Uh, there's a, a claw, you know, we're hanging up stuff to dry. Uh, it was, it was awful. It was intense and awful. You think you can take that down now? Yeah, my uh, storm board, it worked. It worked and I guess stopped a wave or two, but um, not ideal. <laughs> So this is a twice daily activity. Usually you get forecast updates twice a day, one in the morning, one in the evening. That's when the weather models are run. Uh, they're really big weather models run by our supercomputers. All right, so this is Predict Wind. It's a weather routing app and it's really neat because you can zoom in. If I look, if I show you here, that's our boat right there. And it'll, it'll route you. And it'll route you based on not only wind, but also current because what you're looking at right now is wind but if I switch over to current you can see the current model and the reason is routing us where it's routing us is because of really good currents up the Brazilian coast we'll probably take this current all the way to here and then I think we'll probably go offshore a bit more to avoid the northeastern section of Venezuela because that is not necessarily a stable country and we want to stay away from there due to uh, unlikely but possible piracy. So yeah this is something that is so important uh, when you're out here sailing is looking at weather because it affects us greatly when you have shit weather. <laughs> I don't think it's a marlin. Hold on, buddy. Hey, baby. <laughs> <laughs> right, here we go. Oh, nice wahoo! Wow! Beautiful fish! Wow! That's a gorgeous fish! <laughs> Holy smokes. You gotta be so careful with these wahoo. They have razor sharp teeth. If you look at their teeth right there, they go past each other. So they'll scissor. They'll basically see scissor. See how they go past each other right there? Wah, wah. Anyways. I'm gonna bleed them. I got a fish on the other side. And then I'll, I'll pull that guy in next. I think I'll bleed this guy first though. Hold on. Okay, buddy, there's a fish over on that side. Let's go. It's over there. So, 
holy smokes, it's going to be a bit of a bloodbath here uh, cleaning these fish. And uh, check this out, they're massive! They are the biggest fish! <laughs> Whoa! You can't do it! Oh, you did it! You did it! Uh, This is nice to play. So check out this white meat. This might be the most beautiful white meat out of all the fish. It's just really easy to fillet. It doesn't have a lot of bones. It's quick, it's fast, lots of meat on it. No, awesome. No. Bodhi just said it's nap time. Nap time? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so we're gonna go down and go nap time. One, two, <laughs> three. And when I'm not holding the camera, he always jumps. And we count to three and he jumps. And he's a good jumper. Man, it's easier to move. Yesterday, we couldn't have walked down the hall like that. Monkey. Yeah, monkey. Monkey's important. <laughs> All right, nighty night, Bodie. If you ever meet monkey in person, don't touch the tail. Just saying. The tail is disgusting. Leftovers for lunch. Uh, it's 1.30 a.m. P.M. It's 1.30 p.m. <laughs> and we are having a business meeting. Um, you know, the business must continue as we sail around the world. Sailing around the world is actually pretty time consuming. It's going to take us six to eight weeks across the Atlantic. So we're three quarters of the way done. And you know, we're talking about business all the time, usually. Like, what videos are we going to do? How can we do a thumbnail and title for this section? What could be, you know, the story idea for that video? And How did you do this before shop back? So, our back compartments took on some water in that last storm. Um, I think part of just daily routines aboard when you're offshore. It's just checking everything, checking the engines, checking the bilges for oil leaks and coolant leaks, sail drive oil leaks, and then checking, uh, uh, you know, the back compartments for water and those kind of things. So here, I found some water in the back compartments. I think they're just coming in through a broken seal on these latches, which I'll replace in Granada. Um, just part of boat life, you know? There's not much in there. No. Shop vac's awesome though, man. Like I added a shop vac to my arsenal in Thailand and it's just been uh, game changer. It's been a game changer in terms of vacuuming water out of small tight compartments because otherwise you'd have to like get down there with a sponge and try and sponge it up. It's really hard and sweaty and hot. So you just use a shop vac. It's awesome. Just after 4 p.m. So we're doing a time change today. So you get to hang out with this for an extra hour. <laughs> Lucky you. Oh geez, too bad. Too bad for you. Lucky for us, an extra hour. Um, I, you know, I went down just after two, got up just before four, and Ben told me he'd been very busy and he was putting on the TV for the children because, you know, they'd done everything. Well, at least to us, it seems like cheating. Uh, when I grew up, all I had was Road to Avonlea on Sunday nights. We had to have our teeth brushed, pajamas on, and we had to have be bathed. And then we could come downstairs, I think it was 7 to 8 p.m., where we could watch Road to Avonlea. Uh, I'm dating myself, but it's a Waldorf background we had, me and my sister. Uh, my Ashley, I think, was allowed to watch more TV, but also it was, you know, limited. It was back in the day, 80s. 
So um, us allowing them to watch TV is very much a guilty pleasure of ours when we are out sailing. And when we're not sailing at anchor, we usually never turn on the TV. So this is something that is, yeah, just a passage thing. And uh, it gives us a little bit of guilt. But it's a tool and, you know, you can only do so many things. We've done the train set. We've done the cars. We've done the, the, the kitchen. We've done the, the oven. I mean, what else can you do? Uh, kids, especially this little guy right here, has an attention span of a gnat. Hey, patrons. Hey, guys. I have no idea what we said. This is our <laughs> second attempt because the camera died and we lost the first one. Uh, we are off the coast of Brazil and we're scooting northwestward up the northeast coast and there's a what a two three knot current ripping us along kind of like the gulf stream but it wasn't chill a couple days ago which is why we didn't get a video done and we saw the the swell state we knew that there was going to be big waves for the few, first few days but nothing like what we i literally love this about the tropics you are living in the elements and right now it's gone super quiet except for the I'm an engine. You can see the wind line right there, and you can see the rain line right there. It's maybe like five bow lengths away. It's gonna come bucketing down. This is what happens in the tropics. It's like the, the, the line between no rain and rain is just so sudden sometimes. It's super cool. Okay, here we go. Haven't heard any thunder, haven't heard any lightning. It's gonna about to start though. Not the thunder lightning, the rain. <laughs> Feel the cold from the downdraft starting now, so we're in the wind line now. See the ripples? And right there's the rain. Right there! So cool. I don't know why I'm so excited about rain. It's just it's really neat to be living out here exposed like this. Well, Squall's Paws passed and we're back into the doldrums. It is so glossy clear, so glossy calm, it's incredible. Look at this water. That's the Squall that just went by. And it looks like we're clear again for a while. So, Captain, what's next? Yeah. <laughs> Making water it never ends, right? So, just putting in a new pre-filter. I'll show you down below. This is where the salt water first comes in. It goes through a 10, 20 micron filter, then it goes through a five micron filter, then it goes through the boost pump, and then through those. So water makers or desalination plants or reverse osmosis, uh, plants, which is what this is, require a lot of power and you can either have, you know, 12 volt like electrical or uh, 120 volt driven off a generator or you can have engine driven ones, which is what we have. And so this little pump right here, which is connected via a belt to the bottom of our crankshaft, the bottom of the engine, uh, is the magic of the whole system. It uh, forces that salt water at high pressure uh, through those membranes. These are the three membranes that are basically massive filters that take salt water and parse out the brine and the fresh water. So this is basically the dumbest part of the system, just big ass filters.
So if it seems like a very basic uh, primitive system, it is, and there's a reason for it, which is it doesn't have any electronic components other than you know the boost pump and, and switches. Uh, you know, there's no brain that you're, that's gonna you know, blow up. Uh, this is all repairable very easily with uh, high pressure fittings, like hydraulic fittings, and uh, basic hose. So. I love this kind of stuff. Uh, instead of going with some fancy pump and a fancy brain, um, this is much more simple. Keep it simple, stupid is our methodology on HOA to um, make sure things keep running. You come to help? We find this works really well. You know, if you're motoring, you're, you crank out the water, creates 120 liters an hour. So that's that's a lot of water. Uh, we use about 50 liters per person per day. Uh, that works out to uh, 200 liters in total per day. Uh, we've tried to get that down, but to be honest, like, you know, showers and rinse offs in the tropics, uh, after swimming, after you're sweaty, uh, laundry, uh, obviously before bed um, and then obviously drinking water as well is what you know where all this this fresh water goes um, this is definitely one of those things where it is such a vital component this water maker that on the next boat we're gonna have two we're gonna have one that's probably engine driven uh, mechanically uh, powered and then the other one will be probably uh, 12 volt powered so electrical or 48 volt powered whatever we end up going with um, it's probably one of the biggest risks out here is running out of fresh water. Um, if this engine were to die, uh, we would have a problem. If, you know, the water maker pump would die, we would have a problem. Uh, it's a big deal. And having two water makers, I think, is kind of like owning a catamaran where you have two engines, two rudders, uh, two hulls to keep you afloat. It's really smart way to uh, sail across oceans and have the redundancy and the safety factor that you need or want when you are sailing with little kids and uh, with a family. This one's not good, man. I can't salvage that. You don't get too close. It's yucky, Willa. See all the mold? Yeah, you can't eat that. I can't eat that. <laughs> so all our compostables go overboard. This will go overboard. The fish will eat it. <laughs> So the reason compostables go overboard is because we only have limited garbage space and uh, in the ocean things just rot or get eaten uh, that are compostables. Plastic, containers, any kind of wrap or any kind of, you know, thing like that gets thrown in the garbage. In the garbage. After two weeks sailing, we have about four bags of garbage, um, and they're small. Like we compact them and we take them out pretty regularly because of the diapers. Uh, yeah, we're using disposable diapers on Bodhi for uh, offshore. It's debatable whether that's better or worse, but I'm telling you right now, those diapers that I have that are what are they called? The reusable diapers, the like cloth diapers that I have. They would have never dried if I'd had to wash them over the last few days. So um, it's kind of like, I don't know. And the sun is just about to set. And the kids are getting ready for a run, right guys? We're bumping the clocks back, so it's actually 6.15, and after dinner, if it's calm, the kids love to run, and uh, it's a good time. It's like cool, the temperature's gone way down, and uh, it's a fantastic time to get a little exercise.
and it is gorgeous sailing right now. It's absolutely stunning. I hope it stays this way for the rest of the trip. Oh. I don't know. I was here, but it's gone. So I, I don't know, it's, it feels so awesome to catch your fish and then have like dinner from fish and basically live off of, or provide for yourself, I guess, instead of going out and buying chicken or whatever it might be. Yeah, I hope it gives you a little insight into just life aboard. It's really not much different probably than life ashore, except we're kind of trapped, <laughs> trapped on board Noah, and we have a few extra things that we always have to be paying attention to, weather, boats around us, traffic, um, sails, where we're pointing, where we want to go, where we've come from, and trying to hit the currents, so sort of a sea state and things like that. Uh, and the rest, the rest is just life. So I got a quite a, it was fun for me to film today. I hope you enjoy it. And um, sailing around the world and sailing in general and living, live aboard sailing is a lifestyle that is super challenging and super rewarding and it is so amazing to be able to take your home and pack your shell and take all your belongings and your beautiful home and everything that you have into a new country and sail it there and if you get tired of a place just pick up and move again or if you want to see a new place just because you're super excited to explore a different area you can pack up and explore another area and you have everything all the comforts of home with you um, which is incredible really it's incredible that we can do this it's incredible that we can see the places we've seen uh the way we get to see them and you get to go get to remote crazy areas so sailing uh passage making it's all part of it to get to these amazing places and if it weren't for um if it weren't for like all this kind of trials and tribulations as you sail you wouldn't be able to get this experience in Being offshore is one of the beauties of sailing around the world. We don't film, I realized today that we don't film that much in a 24 hour period. Like we just really don't film that much. We film sort of the fun parts, the highlights. We plan to film some things, but for us to just take you through our sort of boring day to day life in a 24 hour period of Nahoa, uh, it's kind of been fun. So thank you for hanging out and thank you for following along.